Hi, James here. Welcome back. My first video in a little while. And in this lesson, I'm going to show you how to play this lick that you just heard me play in the introduction. Now, this lick is taken from my Rock Lick Method for Guitar book. It gives you a step-by-step -step method for really leveling up your rock and metal guitar skills. It comes with over 75 minutes of downloadable video lessons and demonstrations, plus nearly an hour of backing tracks. Now, I won't go on about it too much now because I know you're eager to get to lesson. But there are a load of links underneath this video which you can click to learn more, read reviews and so on. So check those out if you're interested. This lick is taken from chapter 2 in the book which shows you how to build an authentic rock soloing vocabulary. And this is really important if you want to become a good rock soloist. The lick itself is in the style of a player like Angus Young. Use some kind of rock and roll style double stops and a few bends. And it's a great one if you're fairly new to soloing because it's not that difficult to play. Let me demo it for you now over a backing track and then I'll break it down and show you how to play it step by step. Okay, let's break the lick down now. It's in the key of A minor, and it's coming from this shape, a one A minor pentatonic, which I'm sure you all know. Here it is. Probably the most common pentatonic shape you'll see the majority of rock players use, especially players like Angus, who are very blues-based in their soloing vocabulary. Now we're starting off with this cool double stop, but a double stop is two notes played together. I'm going to press down the top two strings at the fifth fret. And we're going to play that once with a down pick. And then I'm going to grab this G string bend at the seventh fret. I'm going to bend it up with my third finger. Then I'm going to play the double stop again and then the bend again. And we do that three times like this. Okay. Then we're going to play the double stop again. And then onto the G string, no bending this time, we're going to go 7-5-7-5. Seven, five, seven, five. So a lot of repetition in this lick. We're really just using a couple of uh, devices and we're stitching them together to come up with a musical phrase. Here's the lick again. So that is bar one. Now, just a little technical tip for you here. You, you might be getting this finding everything ringing together. So here's a little trick you can use here. If you watch my first finger very carefully, you'll notice that when I do the bend, my first finger is just slightly relaxing. It's a very subtle little movement. It's not lifting right off, but what I'm not doing is pressing that down as I do the bend. And when you do this, it basically sort of kills off the sound of the double stop and means that the bend is uh, clean. You don't, you're not getting the sound of it all ringing together. His fingers just relax. Leave it on the strings, don't lift it up, but just let it just slightly soften. Might take a bit of practice to get that, but it's a useful little skill. You notice I'm also coming off the bend when I drop the bend. I'm not uh, staying on there, otherwise I'd have the same problem. Now the second bar is nearly exactly the same. We do this. So it's nearly identical. All we do at the end, we're going to go 7-5-7, seven, seven, but we're going to bend 7. You can follow the tab there just to see the slight difference between the two parts of the lick. You notice my bending position, I've got my thumb over, I'm backing up. If you're not sure how to string bend, then it is an important rock technique. And I've got a couple of videos on my channel just to give you some more pointers about that. It's also covered in the rock lick book as well. Okay, so here's the whole lick slowly up close. Three, four. Let's 
check that out over the backing now. A little bonus tip for you, this lick, like pretty much any lick, is completely movable, meaning you can move it round to other keys. You don't only have to play it in the key of 8 minor. Let's take a quick look at how to do this, you're probably familiar with it, but just in case. So if we've got our A minor pentatonic scale down here, we've already seen that that's where the lick is coming from. Now let's say we want to play this lick in the key of C. Well, we could move the scale shape up to where it becomes a C minor pentatonic, and that's going to be up at the eighth fret. Now, an important thing here is that as you're learning this lick, don't just learn it as a, like a lick which you can play in practice. You want to learn it as a kind of um, shape or an idea within that scale pattern. This is really important, you see, then when you move the scale pattern around, you've still got the lick there, and then you could play it in another key. Like, for example, if I wanted to play it in C, play the exact same thing, I'm just going to play it up at the 8th fret. If I wanted to play it in the key of G, up above the 12th fret, I could move it up here. This is really important, you see, then after this lesson, you haven't just got one random lick that you can play, you've got an idea that you can use in pretty much any rock style solo you want. So if you take the extra time to really learn how that lick fits within that scale pattern, any time you move that scale pattern around, you're going to have the lick there. And I think this is something a lot of people don't really do. I probably didn't do it enough when I was starting to learn to solo, and um, it can really hold you up. So make sure you do that, learn it within the scale pattern, and make sure you can practice moving it around to other keys so you get fluent at doing that. So let's try a lick challenge now. So I've shown you how to play this lick in the key of A minor. How do you play it in the key of B minor? And how do you play it in the key of D minor? So move your scale around the neck, see if you can work those out, and you'll find more lick challenges like this in the book. So I hope you found this lesson today useful. Remember you can go back over this as many times and use the tab to help you learn this lick and then practice working it into your soloing. It is a versatile little idea which I'm sure you can expand into lots of new licks of your own. Remember if you like the way I teach then check out my Rock Lick Method for Guitar book. You'll find links to that in the description below this video. A complete step-by-step -step rock method with over 75 minutes of downloadable video lessons, demonstrations and backing tracks. Okay, look out for some more of these lessons coming very soon. In the meantime, I hope this video helps you out. Have a great day and I'll catch you next time.